Hello there, traders. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back with yet another episode of our weekly outlook. My name is Desmond Samuel, and this is yet another episode of our weekly outlook. Now, um, if you're coming across this video or you're just coming across this, this channel for the first time, I like to assume that, that you want to make money this 2024 trading the financial markets. All right, so do yourself a favor and click the subscribe button and also watch at the end of this video because I like to give my best pairs for the last. All right, so without wasting any much time here, the first pair on our list is Euro USD. Um, if, if you've been with me for a while, you would, you would certainly understand that I've been calling this euro to the downside, right, from right from this point, probably, yeah, this point here, because the market pick, picked up here and then and then created this supply level here, which the market came to validate and then we started dropping. So, but let's do a quick a quick rundown, because I, I like to do something called a top-down analysis, where I go from the monthly time frame to the weekly and to the daily time frame to kind of just see the overall picture. So, um... This is where we, we this is where we're standing at the moment on um euro 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 USD. We had this decent collapse here, and then this is just a pullback. And the chart pattern for me here is is in line with the overall trend, which is head and shoulders pattern. So whenever I see this head and shoulders head and shoulders pattern forming in a downtrend, this is a continuation chart pattern in this case. All right. However, if you see this forming in an uptrend, this is a reversal. So this is a reversal of this back here and we're actually pointing to the downside at the moment although we seem to be having some 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 le some some sort of pullback so going down to the daily time i mean obviously it's clear that we, that we have a head and shoulders pattern here on, on the weekly and on, on the on the on, on the daily time frame as well so without any doubt i'm still bearish on the euro dollar all right so um now this is this is where we are and I was saying to you guys that you know you know listen because I mean I've been I've been doing this for about five years now so I've I've practically seen the worst of the worst times in the in the market All right so I was like you guys whenever you see the market peak above here and then retest and then go all, all the way back something like this you have you have a structure here so this is a low this is a high higher low anyway and this is a high high so. Wait, wait, so, 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 so whenever you see the market do something like this, you need to actually, actually wait for the market to come back and break the structure that, that it has been, you know, it, that, that he, it, that he, he created in the past. All right. So this, it, it has to come and clear this, this bar right here. If I told this guy wants to continue dropping, it has to clear this bar for me to enter. There's no point entering a trade inside of here when you're actually sitting on support and, and also you're, you're, you're basically in between this this resistance and this and this support level here. So for me pers personally, I choose to wait for the pair to actually, you know, decide, you know, on what on, on what direction it wants to go. So um we've seen the, the we've seen the market stop up a lot of traders, obviously. Okay. Because you guys do not actually listen. I, I came on here and, and then I said, you know, whatever thing you, you're doing, wait for the market to clear this level here. Once it has, has broken below this level, because you can see that this was where the market came back to create support before riding all the way up. So wait for the market to come and break this structure to the downside, then you're free to start selling. All right. You don't sell when you're when you're in between this zone like this. This is a break of structure and retest. This is a possible continuation to the upside. So there's no point selling inside of here. You have to wait for the market to decide and then you hop on the trade. All right. So um from from a technical standpoint, this is where we are currently. We are still pulling in waves, all right. So this is a high. This is a low on on the bigger wave, bigger structure perspective. This is a high. This is a low, lower high here, lower high here. Then this is a lower low. So technically, we are, we are still in the process of putting in a, a a lower high, I guess, all right. So now um, however, for the meantime, I'm I'm not I'm not in this trade at the moment. I'm not in any in, in trade in this particular trade at the moment. All right. So I'm just waiting for the market to just finish up whatever I think it, it has to be here. Because I mean again, I feel like this has something to do with it with the dollar index. All right. So let me just see if we have some form of trend line somewhere around here. Okay, so we have the market currently retesting the, the, the outer part of the trend line here. So I mean this is still 50 50, 50 to the to the upside, 50 to the downside. All right. However, I won't be interested in this guy if we eventually bounce out of here that is a point because this is also a break and retail this is a bullish engulfing candle on the daily time frame so 24 hour candle engulfed one two three four engulfed one two three rather all right so it, it it engulfed the previous three days trading activity and now this is this kind of rejecting off of them so this is actually pointing to the upside at the moment however if i bring my trend line right if i plot my trend line from these levels like this you can see that the market is still trading within that this trend line. All right, so I I'm, I will not I will not advise you to go buying this guy right now. Okay, I will, I will say that you should allow the euro USD to have maybe maybe probably about maybe a week to itself. All right, to actually decide where it eventually wants to go because 
you guys know that this this pair is inversely correlated to the dollar index. So whatever the dollar index is doing, this tends to, to do the inverse. All right. So you, you have to wait for the market to actually decide where it, it wants to go before we now hop on the trade. All right. So um, like I said, I'm still I'm I'm still bearish on this guy. I feel like this market is just flagging at the moment, it's just flagging. All right. So eventually it's gonna drop. All right. It, it, might, it might not be now, but you know, things are pointing south at the moment. You know things are pointing bearish. However, before I hop on this trade, I, like I said earlier, I have to see markets come in here and break this structure. Let me, let's let's go down to the four hour time frame and see how things look. So on four hour time frame, yeah, this is how it looks on four hour time frame. So we we seem to we seem to making a bullish a bullish structure here, which is which in this case I feel like this is just a, re, a reversal or or rather this is still a pullback rather all right pardon me pullback rather so I like to see the market come in here all right clear this trend line and this and this bar here so just do something like this all right just do give me something like this here we have the break back down below and the pullback then this will now expose this key level at 1.05351 because this this could eventually be a bull trap all right you have this the market peaked higher here came back here you know you still play and this and this high is lower than this this previous high so i feel like this the market is literally about to give up however i'm i'm still not convinced i have to wait for this guy to break back down below here i'm not i'm not gonna sell inside here if it breaks in, in, into this point, I'm not selling, all right? And, and see the market break below this bar here. So and I, I know that I'm, I have free space. I have space from here to here. And this is about, um, this is over 100 pips. So this is about 137 pips, roughly 140 pips, all right? So with three entries, you should be looking at maybe 300 pips, 300 plus pips, all right? So listen, wait, wait for the market to break this yellow bar right here at 1.06841, and then you should see the euro collapse all the way to this to this key level at 1.05385. Uh, so that's that for the for the euro euro dollar. Um, the, the next pair on my on my list now will be the pound sterling. Now the pound sterling and the uh, and the euro dollar have have something in common. However, I I, th I think I prefer the the pound sterling structure to what the euro is, is doing at the moment. The pound sterling seems to be a lot more promising, all right, compared to what the euro euro dollar is doing. So um, I saw some of my chart pattern on the on the pound sterling, which I which strongly signals that this 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 guy is gonna collapse, all right, anytime soon is is gonna collapse. So we have um. We have um, this trend that I plotted last last um, episode of our, of our weekly outlook where we had the first touch here, second touch here. This is probably, probably the, the third touch. Now, the market picked above here, all right? It picked above here and then folded all the way back down, okay? Now, I need I need to use this to explain something to you. Whenever you have the market do something like this and, and come all the way back down, now, chances are the market tends to, to, to move in the opposite direction. I mean, based on my, my own experience, like I said, I've 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 been doing this for about five years now, so I've seen these things happen several times. But whenever the market, whenever you see the market have a fake out like this and then break all the way back down, it tends to move in the opposite direction exponentially. That is, it tends to move. In this case, it it, it tends to go bearish, all right, bearish straight to TP. So now this is where we are now on the on the pound standing. So we had this um this. This is a head and shoulders pattern, like likely a head and shoulders pattern forming here. All right. And this is also forming at the third touch of the trend line. So this is the first touch here, second touch here. And this is the third touch of, 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 of the trend line here. So this is a head and shoulders pattern, which is also in line with the overall trend, which is bearish. So, like I said earlier, everything just boils down to this point here. This is the deciding point. All right. So I'm going to be waiting for another another probably two, three days to see how the market reacts around this level here. But I'm actually bearish on this guy. I do not see the pound standing riding all the way up at the moment. All right, I like to see this guy break back down below this yellow bar here, and then we'll have free space. Obviously, first level target at 1.23151, and then second level target at 1.21500. All right, so now, um, guys, I'm currently creating a course that um, would, would actually enable you trade um, supply and demand levels on the higher time frames. All right, so, I'm gonna group that course into into two um aspects. We will have one for the swing traders and we'll have one for the day traders. All right, because I feel like a lot of you guys may not may not really have the patience to wait for the market to, to, to be to be ready. So I'll I'll come together to put to put something for you guys which will enable you, you know, look for look for lower time frame, high probability trade setups while you're waiting you know for the for the higher time frame trades. And obviously the, the lower time frame trades will all will always go in line with overall trend. All right. So 
in this case here, I can I can see a decent a, a decent demand trade. You know, so a, a, a couple of a couple of demand trades here where, where you have you know whenever the market breaks above a level and retest it for for um it comes it comes back for is a, a smaller pullback here and then and then rallies that level tends to act as as demand and you can see clearly here. So it broke above here. You know, came into retail here, came up here again, and then when when it came for the second bounce, it rallied. All right. So these are like the simple simple trades that that you can be trading on the on lower time frame, which I'll be teaching you guys how to go about it. All right. So but for the pound sterling so far, I'm actually still bearish on this guy. I'm favoring this guy about eighty percent to the downside because I need to see this guy break back down below here. Now the only way this is guaranteed, the the only way the the um the the trade is guaranteed is if we do see a break of this neckline here. This is a neckline. This is head, shoulder, shoulder. This is the neckline. So once we see a decent break back down below the, the neckline here, it exposes the 1.23200 region, and this this would be probably one of the easiest trades to take. All right. So that's that for the for the pound sterling. The the first level target for this guy, if and only if we break back down below this neckline here, is 1.23200, and the Overall, level target for this guy is this, this key bar here, which is 1.21435. So the next panel on my list is going to be is going to be AUSD. So AUSD obviously is doing is doing something similar to to um to to the GBPUSD. All right. So um for AUSD, it's 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 somewhat somewhat um in, in a range, and I've been I've been saying to you guys that you know you know, listen. The, the market tends to trend for just 40% of the time. The rest of the 60%, it is it is in a range, right? So even while you're whilst you're whilst you're in a trade and you're and, and you're counting your waves, you need to also have it at the back of your mind that the market could pull back and get into a range at any point in time. All right. So this is um Aussie dollar at, at the moment. My charts are frozen. Okay, so now you have you have this pair right here. So let's let's just go from the from the from the daily time frame and see what the bigger picture has, has been like over the past few weeks. So we had this um this um supply level right here, and you can see that the market just came in, into the supply here. And if I if I if I, if I bring my feet to from swing high to swing low here, you can see that we are actually sitting in 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 between the 0 0.5 and the 0 0.6 region, which is also a key supply level. Now I do not see this guy going all the way up. All right, I, I do not see the Aussie, Aussie dollar breaking all the way up. In fact, if anything, I, I actually see this guy, you know, collapsing all, all the way back down. Now, reason being that this this is a this is a solid level right here. This is a solid supply. You can see that the market broke below here, then came back for a shallow re retracement, a shallow pullback, creating a supply level here, and then the market came back to retest that. And ever since then, it has been playing inside of this zone. Same thing that happened right right here where the market broke last year, 20, like 2023, I think from like February. All right, February till about April, we are we are in in between this this supply and this demand level here. So likewise, that is what is happening at at the moment. So um, for the Aussie dollar, it's 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 simple. All right, so we have we have rallied all the way into supply levels and we have created a new a new supply here. So now now whenever the market does this here and it fails to break above, it now it is actually starting to put in a lower high for, from from this previous high here. So this is. A rally into supply level, then you know first reaction. Then this is this is the second pullback, and ideally this tends to send the market you know dropping all the way down. All right, so that's why I'm I'm actually still bearish on this guy, provided we stay below this yellow bar right here. Provided all the dollar stays below this yellow bar, this um not point six is four hundred. I'm actually still bearish on the Aussie, Aussie dollar. The only the only time I'll be changing my biases and my and my and my perspective is if is if we do breach this yellow bar right here, which obviously I'll be here to you know um, um um inform you guys and then guide you guys on what to do but at the moment i'm still i'm still very sure all the all that are provided that we stay below this supply level now in the event that we do break above this this supply level here i'll be targeting the recent highs all right nothing nothing complex nothing um um, um hard or, or or difficult here so it's just from from highs to lows, all right. So if you do break above above here yeah it exposes this 0 0.68431 region all right, so a break above this this yellow bar here, the Aussie dollar is coming to zero point six eight four three one. Now, in the event that this supply level holds, which it has held in the past several times, I do see this guy, you know, dropping all the way back down. Now, the reason as to why I'm 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 banking on this is because the Aussie on and and gold tends to co to correlate that that is they move in the right direction most of the time. So since the gold still has a, a, a lot of room, you know, to 
to fill in, you know, for the for for the pullback into the field region that I told you guys about in the last episode. I'm still banking on this guy dropping to the uh, to the downside because I'm still bullish on 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 the on, on the dollar index. All right, so I'll, I'll be showing you guys all those all those pairs in a few in a few minutes. So the next pair on my list now will be NZD USD. So for NZD USD, um, we have seen some form of fake out here. Yeah? We have we have seen some some form of fake out on the on on NCD USD. So let me just pop that chart up real quick. So we have um the overall um, trend here for for NCD USD has been has been bearish. All right, we have been bearish for a long time. However, the market was just starting to pull back. All right, and, and which is normal. All right. So like I said, the market only trends for forty percent of of the time. The rest of the sixty percent it is in the range. Now the now the good thing for you is that that we have an established trend. Okay, we have an established trend which is down. So this is the supply level that that i've been talking about in in recent times actually hold on let me hide this um floating control meeting control whatever i have so we have this 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 supply level that, that i have been talking about you know in, in recent times and now we have seen the market pop above above here and it's looking like it, it, it wants to retest this this double bottom here now i need you guys to understand that this was where the market reversed to reversed at or reversed from you know in the past you can see so um this is this is this is very very normal. So for for the NCD USD, I I see this as a fake out. Even though we we have we have we have seen a decent break above this trend line and a retest, but I'm still not confident in the bullish setup of this guy. All right, I I like to I like to leave this guy for and and now we can see and see how how it looks. But for me personally, I'm favoring this guy to the downside because I I mean. We, we may put potentially rally into this supply level right here and then and then maybe continue downwards okay because like i said earlier the market loves it it's it supply and demand and then also the market loves to go for liquidity so if you guys have all one of others you know stock up here the market has to has to come and, and liquidate every single thing before it now goes in the in this direction so um for for nzd usd this is what it looks like all right we are i'm, I'm still bearish on this guy provided that we stay below this supply level here now in the event that we actually come in, into the supply level and then break above now we have we have a problem all right because we, we we could actually see a, a reversal to the upside but i'm still not convinced because this is the this is the, this is the lower time frame and we have the dollar st starting to put in higher highs and higher lows so i see no reason as to why i, sh I should be bullish on on NZD USD when the dollar is, is, strength, is strengthening, all right. So that's that just that for NZD USD. Once again, I'm sat on my hands. I have I have no trades on this pair so far. Euro Euro USD, I'm still bearish. Pound sterling, I'm bearish. All the Aussie dollar, I'm bearish. NZD USD, I'm bearish. However, uh, I have no trades on them yet. Right? I'm, I'm waiting for every single thing to line up because one thing that you you don't want to do is have the daily time frame and the four hour time frame conflict the weekly time frame. All right, so everything must fall in line with the overall time frame. So I'm waiting patiently, guys. It is not about the number of trades you take; it is how profitable you are in the long run. Okay, so if if, if you can take four trades in a month, five trades in a month, or even two trades in a month. And you're, and you're able to make, you know, a decent 10%, decent 20, 10, 15%, you're, you're good to go, all right? Even if you're making 8%, you're still, it's still decent. 6% is still decent, all right? So, they, so there's no point chasing trades. You have to wait for, wait for the market to come into your own into your own zone. Set your trap and wait, and wait for the market to come in. That is how you trade professionally. You don't go around chasing the market, all right? So the next pair on my list now, let me, I just, I, I, I want to keep things brief today because... We don't have that much movement so far in in the market, except for the Japanese index pairs, which I'll be talking about in a few minutes. So, um, what other pair do we have here to talk about? What is looking decent? Let's talk about gold. All right. So, for gold now, um, I've been highlighting a, a pullback for some for some weeks now, but for some reason, gold is just dulling. It's just slow at the moment. I mean, obviously, you know, um, followed by this by by the but by, by the by the dollar index weakening so we came on here okay and this was the demand that was that was created so technically whenever whenever you see the market create a demand level like like i've just explained in the previous um um pairs the market tends to come back into that demand level and then rally all the way up as you can see i've had my i've had my two bar here waiting for this guy patiently to come into the demand level all right i have no trades on this guy i'm not in this guy at the moment but however i do i do see this supply level here which the market could potentially come into before you know dropping all the way back down because this was where it created that that supply level you, you can see the sharp move down and then this is 
disappear level, you know, that the market is coming back to come and retest. Okay, so we could potentially see see the um, um go put in a double top, all right? We could we could see this guy put in a double top now in the event that that, that, that doesn't happen because you must always have contingency plans. Like I said earlier, you know, any anything is possible in this market. However, nothing happens for no reason. So we need to see the market break above this bar before I'm not confident that this guy actually wants to continue to the upside. Now, in the event that he doesn't break above here, I'm, I'm waiting for this guy to clear this bar here and come back down. Yeah, I see no reason why I should, I should be selling gold in this bullish trend. I'm not going to be selling gold for, for any reason whatsoever. I, I like to see the market even, even come in and then fall in line with the overall trend. Give me, I'd rather wait for this guy to break above here and buy it than actually start selling, selling this guy because I'll be going against the trend. Do you understand? I'd rather wait especially for this guy to break above this yellow bar here. Then I buy, then actually start selling this guy as a pullback. You, you, you're going to get burnt. And one of the things with, with trading pullbacks is that there's only so much pips you can make. Let's say, for instance, that, that, that the overall trend, the overall setup for the for the overall trend is giving you about 100 pips, maybe 200, 300 pips. If you decide to go against the trend, you can be working away with 30 pips. That is, that is if you're even successful enough to work away with it. Because sometimes the, the market tends to come in and, and, and stop and stop you out. All right. So we still have a supply level here, which the market could potentially push into before, you know, collapsing all the way, creating a double top here. However, I'm still bullish on gold because I see a decent Fibonacci, you know, level here, which from swing, swing low to swing high here, you can see that this is where the market came into. And I, ideally, we should see a decent pullback to at least this 0.6 region before we actually contribute to the upside. So that's that for gold. Um, jumping into jumping into the JPY page real, real quick, I'd like to see what's happening. I'd like to see what's happening. Mm, oil prices at the moment are just playing games. Uh, nothing clear. Um, nothing to talk about there for oil. But okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's let's talk oil. Let's talk oil. So for US oil, I have been highlighting US oil to the upside. And obviously, due, due to the overall um, um calmness in the in the in, in the geopolitical events, um everything seems to have calmed down, and the market is just coming you know into this level here. However, I'm I'm still not convinced that um that this market is, is actually meant to drop all the way down. <laughs> now, provided that we stay above this 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 yellow bar at seventy eight point two seven dollars a barrel, I see no reason as to why the the oil oil should not actually actually go all the way back up because now this is this is this is a trend all right like it or not this is a trend however now let's let's look at the the the, the higher time frame let's see what the weekly time frame looks like before we actually consider this a trend so let's see what the weekly time frame looks like okay so we have this this trend line here from the from the very high all the way down here okay so this is the market actually hold on let's see something all right, so um, it's it's a it's a fifty fifty scenario now. It is a fifty fifty scenario now for US oil because this is where we're at. We have the third touch of of trend and happening here, which is first touch, second touch, and third touch. Then following the calmness, you know, of the of the Middle East crisis, this oil is starting to you know drop all, all the way back down. Okay, so now let's let's talk about the um. Actually, hold on. I think I see something. Hold on. I think I see something on oil. Okay, so this is looking like a head and shoulders pattern here. So this is um a head. This is the left shoulder. This is the right shoulder. So this is actually start, starting to point to the to, to the downside. Here. However, the deciding factor for this pair is going to be this trend. This, let me adjust my trend lines properly. So the deciding factor for this pair will be this trend line and then this this level right here. Okay. So if at all that if at all oil is is actually you know um willing to rally all the way up, we need to see the market bounce off of this fib, this fib level here. All right. This was this is a fib level. So this was where the market came into rallied, created a, a demand level, then then they went all the way up. So this, so this is the market potentially coming back to test this. Um, the amount level that, that it has it, it has created here. So if I, if I bring my my Fibonacci to, so this is a high, this is a low, this is a high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high right here. So technically, we ought to have come in to put in a higher low. So I think this is what the market is doing at the moment. If I told this guy wants to rally up, and then this also lines up with with the Fibonacci from swing low to swing high. Yeah, so it is a bit of a, 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 a 50 50 and and the deciding factor now will be this yellow bar and this and and this trend line here. So if we do see 
a daily bearish engulfing candle break below here and sustain, then we, we then we we'll, we'll most likely see oil, you know, drop all the way down to $68 a barrel. All right. You heard it here first. If we do see, because now I have I have a head, head and shoulders pattern forming on the weekly time frame, and then this head and shoulders pattern forming on the daily time frame again. All right. So we could actually actually see this guy drop all, all the way to $68 a barrel. However, for, for us to take any trades or for us to be actually sure of, of the movement here, we need to see this guy break below this yellow bar and this trend line, thereby exposing the 68 region here. All right. So that's that for, for um US oil. It is very, very simple. A break above here, actually, a break, a break above this um this this counter trend lines here, we buy a break below this yellow bar and then this trend line here we sell. It's easy. All right. So so whichever direction that the pair wants to go, you can always make money because I'm here for you. Now, if you're enjoying this content so far, please do me a favor and hit the hit so hit the subscribe button, leave a like and a comment. All right. So the next pair on my list now has to be the JPY pairs. Let's let's talk about the JPY pairs because um one of my mentees in my in my program did something amazing. All right, I did not even realize that he had he had caught the trade, and um, which is the reason as to why I urge you guys to grab this 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 program because right now it is cheap. All right, it is affordable at the, at the moment. Sorry, I, I use the word cheap. <laughs> it is affordable at the moment. So um for USD JPY um I, I I've been highlighting this pullback for a very very long time now. Mind you guys, I have predicted the collapse of the Jap the Japanese index pair. Uh, I think last year, 2023, January, all right, and I and I said to you guys that I was actually very, very bearish on that guy. And let's let's go from the monthly time frame. Let me show you guys what's what, what's actually happening and why I'm so confident in the fact that this guy is gonna rally all the way up. All right. So we have a, a massive chart pattern playing here, which is the inverse head and shoulders pattern. Now, standard procedure students, you know what this means. All right. So if this happens on the, on the monthly time frame or on the weekly time frame, it is huge. All right, it is huge. And using the um the the range principle from swing from um the top of this range to the to the bottom here, you, we we have we have about four thousand nine hundred and thirty and thirty four pips. So if if we now bring bring this bar right here, so the market is actually supposed to rally into the tune of this four thousand nine hundred and thirty four pips. And so far, so good. We've only, we've only done probably maybe one 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 third of this entire move. All right. So now um. Following up what's what's happening currently on on the on the on the daily time frame, we had a breakout here on um on the on the US JPY, and then I said to you guys that you know provided that the market stays above this bar here, the only thing that I need to look for is a pullback. Once I see a decent pullback on this guy, I'll jump on this trade and then you know take it all the way up. Now I I think I totally forgot about this pair. However, my mentee um. By the way, shout, shout out to Kemzi. So he caught this trade inside of here, and he he sent he sent the um the trade set up to me in the in the group. So which is the reason as to why I urge you guys to to do yourself a great a great 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 injustice to grab the course. It's currently going for seventy dollars at the moment, and I cannot guarantee you that by the time I come back here next week for a, a weekly outlook that that the, that the, that the fee remains seventy dollars. All right. So it's currently sub seventy dollars. Ideally, it should be hundred, but but because um, I want to I want to make it easy for you guys, and then and then also I'm still trying to upload the course online. So once the course goes live online, then that's it. The fee is hundred hundred dollars, no no discounts whatsoever. All right. So it, it was it was a very very simple trade. Obviously break of structure and then the pullback here, and then we had the Fibonacci um, um tool from swing low to swing high here, which which balanced nicely at at the 0.6. 0.618 region and I, and I told them this this entry this bounce entry all right so if you go down on the four hour time frame and so say for instance that you have a breakout okay and you, and you wait for a pullback now if you have the market pullback like this in in the way that it, it is not flagging what we use is the bounce method that is we look for okay so this 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 meant to be for the cause so so we look for a, a decent bounce off of the off of the retested level and then and then we enter and then stock losses always go below structure for buys and then above structure for sales all right so long story short we are, we are actually, actually still going in for the entire entire um entire it will entire 790 pips on 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 us jpy all right so from here to here it's about 790 pips and if you're not in this trade already it, it is too late Okay, so we are we are actually actually long this pair at, at the moment. Um, um, Kemzi send this trade to our to our to our mentorship channel, all right, which is the reason as to why I, I urge you guys to check the description of, of this video. You're gonna see the, the the link to my Telegram community, or send me an email that you want to enroll for the mentorship program. It's easy, all right. So, something else at the moment. So the the next pair on on my list now is Card JPY and GBP JPY. Now, um. 
US Gen went to the upside, currently running in profit. Um, um, let's talk about CAD JPY and and GBP JPY. Okay, so um for CAD JPY here, this is the one that I actually took. Uh, I did not trade uh, the the US JPY. I didn't take the the um the the, the pound JPY. So it is it is also similar. All right. So we have a break of structure and a pullback here. So this this is a swing low. If you if you count your if you do your waves right, all right. Let's go to the to, 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 to the to the daily time frame. If you do your waves right, you're, you're gonna see that this is the this is the structure here. So this is swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low. All right. So this was a simple entry here from from swing low to swing high Fibonacci. And then it bounced off of that Fibonacci level. And then entries were made around here. And then stop losses, stop losses went below structure. And I'm going for the entire entire um 435 pips on CAD JPY. All right. So this trade is currently running risk free. Um, um all profits are locked in, and my um, and my trades are, are currently my stop losses has been moved past um break even, and everything is running risk free. So um this trade was sent into my into my into my um mentorship program all right so there's a channel for that as, as well on, on telegram which is which is why i hold you guys to actually grab the course um every, everyone else is, is complaining about how the how the market is slow but we are we are actually making money all right so for for euro jpy same thing upside um i think euro jpy is, is close to hitting targets at the moment if, if, I'm, if i'm not mistaken yeah it's it, it actually close to hitting its it own target so let's talk about the um the the japanese index all right so you're not BTC, bro. Japanese index. So for the Japanese index here, this is the inverse of USDJPY, all right? And it is it is simple and straightforward. Simple and straightforward. We have a break of structure and, and a pullback, okay? And if you look left, let's go on to, on the bigger time frame and see what and, and see what's happening. So if you look left, you can see the swing high there. So Technically speaking, this guy is still bearish. It's very, very bearish. And that's why we hop on the buy on the best setups across CAD JPY, GBP JPY, and US JPY. So you have your swing, swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, a pullback. All right. And then this pullback was also a Fibonacci. And mind you guys, I gave you guys this trade call on my on my last episode of my weekly outlook. So I'm surprised that, that, that you guys did not actually take the trade. Um following the 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 BOJs, um decision to hold interest interest rates at, at zero or right, um this is making this pair actually further collapse to the downside all right so my target so far for this guy is actually for technical reasons i like to put it here okay for technical reasons i like to put it at 0 0.0063725 okay so this is currently running risk free um let's let's hop on to the next pair so let's let's talk btc um, I have been talking about BTC and highlighting BTC to 58k, about about 58k thereabouts. So let's see how far how far the market has gone. Um, for BTC, let's see what's happening, guys. I don't know why my charts are frozen, man. We have BTC here, um, and BTC is currently it's currently falling as I, I I spoke to you guys about. I said I said that 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 BTC created a solid demand level and it has to come back and retest it, and that was what happened. All right, so we 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 came from this whole point here. We put in an impulsive move, so this is a swing low to swing high move, and we have the market starting to put in lower lows and lower highs. We have a high low, higher low. Sorry, um, lower high, lower low, lower high, and the, the market actually need, need this coming and putting at least an equal low or a, a lower low right here. And if I bring my Fibonacci just like this from swing low to swing high, you can see that this lines up with the with the Fibonacci region around here. So 0.618 is where I'm going for, for this guy. So so we may see the BTC drop all the way to 51k actually, 51k, 52k thereabout, and then we then see a, a blast all the way up to um probably all-time highs of 70, 71,000 dollars of coin. All right, so for BTC, long story short, we're actually bearish on this guy here. This guy is putting in series of lower lows and, and lower highs. And my, and my prime target for BTC is $52,000 a coin. 51, 50, okay, let's 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 try and precisely pinpoint this guy. So this is coming to 52K per coin, $52,000 a coin. So let's see. You know how, how how the market goes, but for me personally, I'm waiting for this guy around 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 this around this region here, and then and then let's see how the market behaves around fifty two thousand dollars of a coin, and then we, we, we could potentially see this guy rally all the way to all time highs. Since we are we are currently bullish at the moment, all right. 
Um, that's that for for BTC. I don't think there's anything to to worry too much about. Um, let's see the let's see how the weekly time looks. Okay, we've seen a fake out here. So yeah, this is you remember this this level has served as 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 a supply level before. So it is now going to serve as as the as the demand as the demand level hopefully. So let's get this out of the way. So so BTC is actually coming to fifty two thousand or fifty one thousand dollars of coin, and then we we'll watch and see how, how the market yields around there. If we if we don't see a bounce here, we could actually see BTC break below this 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 forty seven thousand forty seven thousand dollars a a coin level, and then expose the 25 twenty twenty k. A coin level. However, I'm not sure that's that's gonna happen. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure that is that is likely to happen. Okay, I'm not sure that that is likely to happen. However, like I said, it is up to this bar right here. If we do breach this bar, then it is definitely it is definitely gonna happen because even after we created this demand level here, we didn't even come back to test it. Okay, so this is and then this is now looking like a, a triple top on on the monthly time frame. So anything is possible. Anything is possible with. With BTC, however, I'm I'm banking on this on this level right here. So so we, we need to see BTC drop all the way to fifty one thousand thousand dollars a coin level, and then we could actually you know blow this guy all the way back up. All right, so that's that for BTC. And if I bring my Fibonacci to, you can see that it lines up perfectly with that level right there on on, on the market time frame. So I'm waiting patiently to see BTC at the at the at the region of maybe forty eight k fifty k, and they will now blow all the way up. However, this is now looking like a triple top on multi time frame, so you have to be extra careful. Okay, you have to be very very careful. So um, let's talk the dollar index now. So for 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 the, for the, for the dollar index, I have been bullish. You guys have, have seen my previous videos. I've been highlighting the the to the upside for a while now, and um, I think recently due to the the first decision to 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 hold rates at where they are um it has it has it has weakened the dollar a bit and then obviously following the the the, the weak uh, nfp however so this is what it, it looks like on the on the daily time frame for the dollar index i'm still very very bullish on this guy now we had lots of liquidity here which i spoke to you guys about so so whenever you see the markets you know create liquidity around here now what has happened is that the market came to you know do to do something called a liquidity sweep where it sweeps the 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 liquidity because they have lots of orders here and then come back and then rally all the way up. So going down to the four, I'm still I'm still bullish on this guy. All right, I'm still bullish on this guy. Let let's see if we have some form of channel to to play with. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, it is it is a bit of a 50 50 All right, so provided that we stay above this this black bar here, I'm bullish. However, now if we do break below this this yellow bar and come here, I'll be looking forward to. To see how the market behaves around this around this trend line here. If if we do break back down below, below this trend line here, then it will not expose this um this 103.833 region. But I'm personally bullish on this guy. I don't think that that's gonna happen. Um now let's let's go let's go down to the four hour time frame and see what happens. So for the four hour time frame here, we had a a break of structure here and, and a retest. However, upon upon coming in into, into the level here, because I have been highlighting this level for a very long time, I said that this is a this is a demand level. And like I said earlier in for for the previous period, whenever you see the market, you know, break above and then give you a shallow retracement and then continue in, in the in the breakout direction, that is the demand level created. So what do you do? You wait for the market to come back and retest that demand level, and then watch the market rally all the way up. So following the bullish technical standpoint, this is still bullish. I'm still very bullish on this guy. In fact, I'm still very confident that 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 somewhere in this year or maybe early next year, we will see the dollar rally all the way to one 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 four, all right? Which 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 was um the the all time highs, all right? One one four. So um, is it all time highs? The recent high. 114. All right. So now, if you bring your fibs from swing low here, you guys, you guys know me. I love, I love Fibonacci. So from swing low to swing high, here, you can see that the market came to test this 0.600 region and bounced off of it. Now, if you look closely again, yeah, we have too many lines in my chart. So if you look closely again, we we, we do have um following the retest of this 105 region here, we 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 put in something like a neighbor side of shoulders pattern, which is a a, a, a reversal chart pattern in this case, and then also a, a continuation for the bullish bullish trend. Now, if you go to the daily time frame, that's also an entry candlestick pattern, which I which which I teach in my mentorship program, where you have the bearish candle here followed by indec 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 indecisive candle, then followed by a bullish engulfing candle. This is an entry candle, all right? So 
Preventure, you see this kind of setup in, in a trade and then you want to take it, you, you, you make sure that you wait for this candle, the bullish candle to break, to close rather, you know, bullish break and close. That is, it has it has to break this, this high of this previous candle here. So you have a bearish engulfing candle, followed by an initial candle, followed by a bullish engulfing candle. Entries here, some of this below structure and then you go in the overall trend. So this is now looking like a higher low here because now this is a low, this is a high, higher low right here. Okay. So I'm still very, very confident that this guy is, is going to go all the way up. Now, what's what's going to guarantee that this that this guy will rally all, all the way back up is this black bar here. If you are able to reclaim that is come back up above this black bar here, then we are actually very confident that this guy is going to collapse, rather rally. That is the the pound sterling would, would collapse, the euro will collapse, the NZD dollar um um will collapse, the um US dollar also will collapse. All right, so I'm 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 actually looking forward to that because this is this is a retest of this neckline of this inverted and shoulders pattern here. So let's see how how next week you know opens. Let's see how 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 the market goes next week. All right, so Monday Tuesday we should see this guy decide. However, in the event that he chooses to break 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 back down below here, we have this trend line here which could potentially serve as the top touch of the trend line. All right, and you guys know that top touch always tends to do the trick overall. So I think that's it, and I think we are we, we, I'll be drawing the curtains close here on this episode all right so thank you so much for staying true to the end once again my name is desmond samuel and, and, and i'll see you guys in, in the next episode all right so make sure that you find the link in, in, the, in the description here that brings you straight to my telegram community where you get to meet like many traders like yourself and then shoot me an email if you want to enroll for, for the mentorship program it's currently going for 70 dollars however once my course is live online it now goes for the full fee of 100 dollars. all right so thank you so much and trade safe peace out